Barbara Streisand has amassed a sizable fortune, estimated at a pretty $400 million. And when you have that kind of cheddar, you can afford to get as weird as you want. Let's find out the unexpected ways Barbara Streisand spends her millions. Ah, uh, the mall. A quintessential part of American culture. In their heyday, many would flock to malls not just for the consumer experience, but to meet with friends or grab a bite to eat. For Barbara Streisand, she doesn't even have to leave her own home. As she revealed to Harper's Bazaar, Streisand felt inspiration strike after a trip to a decorative arts museum in Delaware called Winter Tour, which included several replica early 19th century shops. So she decided to build a mall in her house to house her various collections. She said that she realized, instead of just storing my things in my basement, I can make a street of shops and display them. According to Harper's Bazaar, the private mall inside her $100 million Malibu compound boasts an antique shop, a gift shop, an antique clothes shop, a doll shop, and even a sweet shop. And best of all, she doesn't have to pay for anything when she shops, because she already owns it all. She said, you can do that if it's your own mall. Always the entertainer, Streisand is known to invite fellow A-listers such as Lady Gaga, Ryan Murphy, and Henry Winkler. Oh, been to the mall. I, I, I was there when it just finished construction. Uh, it is a real city street in the basement of her um, second home. Barbara Streisand has always been a collector. During an interview with House Beautiful in 1974, Streisand revealed that she began her quest for collecting antiques and vintage pieces in her teens, scouring vintage shops in her native New York. As she grew her professional career, her personal collection and taste began to flourish as well. Streisand wrote in My Passion for Design that began to buy Art Nouveau furniture after receiving her first paycheck from Broadway. She purchased an Emile Gallet cabinet that was so big she had nowhere to put it in her then modest home, so she paid for it in installments and stored it in the shop's basement. I had never seen furniture like this, Tiffany lamps, Art Nouveau bronzes, and Vienna Secession pewter. Per the New York Times, while Streisand's love for Art Nouveau may still be apparent after all these decades, her obsession with the geometric shapes of the Art Deco movement came to an end after she spent five years renovating her home at the time to match the specific style. Calling the process a quote, ordeal, she wrote, by the time it was over, I never wanted to look at Art Deco again. Much like Barbara Streisand began collecting specific styles of antique furnishings when she got her big break on Broadway, she also did the same with artwork. As she revealed during an interview with the New York Times in 1964, after her Funny Girl debut on Broadway, she meticulously saved enough money to buy a small work by painter Henri Matisse. This, she confirms, was her quote, first major purchase. Over the years, the legendary A-lister has collected a vast amount of artwork from influential painters, including 1885. Five's Peasant Woman with Child on Her Lap by Vincent van Gogh, which she loaned to a museum. There are other works she eventually decided to sell, and at a big profit. She revealed to the New York Times that she purchased a Gustave Klimt piece in 1969 for $17,000 and sold it later for $650,000. And she also uses these paintings as inspiration for her interior design work. She wrote in My Passion for Design that when she began designing her Malibu mansion, she created an entire room around a painting by Paul César Helou. In a February 2018 Variety interview, Barbara Streisand casually dropped the fact that she had her dog cloned. Of course, the world went nuts. She cloned her favorite dog twice. Barbara said, I couldn't help myself. He was delicious. Less than a week later, Streisand wrote a column for the New York Times defending her reasoning in a way that any pet owner could understand. She just really missed her dog. These dogs give you unconditional love. After discovering that a friend of hers had cloned their own dog, Streisand was inspired to do the same. Before Samantha passed away, Streisand took the dog to the vet and got some cell samples, which she then sent to a company called Viagen Pets to be cloned. The cost for such a procedure? National Geographic estimates that cloning your pooch comes with a $100,000 price tag, near peanuts for Streisand. To the actor's surprise, after receiving a call from the lab, Streisand didn't end up with one clone dog, but four. After one died, she gave a second away, leaving her with two clones of her departed Samantha. She wrote, You can clone the look of a dog, but you can't clone the soul. Still, every time I look at their faces, I think of my Samantha and smile. 
Los Angeles' Carrollwood Drive may not mean much to some, but it's home to a handful of the wealthiest people on the planet, and has been for a long time. According to LA Biz, the street once saw Michael Jackson, Frank Sinatra, Gregory Peck, Clark Gable, Elvis Presley, and Sonny and Cher all casually basking in the California sun. And that's not all. Walt Disney was also once a homeowner there, and it was at his Carrollwood Drive home where he first began tinkering with the ideas that became Disneyland. Oh, and Barbara Streisand also once lived there. According to the Barbara Streisand Archives Gallery, the star initially began renting her Carrollwood Drive home in 1969, eventually deciding to buy it. The home was originally built in 1929 in a Mediterranean style, yet Streisand elected to renovate it. She told the Los Angeles Times that she, quote, doesn't like Mediterranean architecture unless it's in the Mediterranean. Streisand eventually sold her home, and in 2000, her estate on 301 Carrollwood Drive was demolished. In 2020, Barbara Streisand gushed to the New York Times, I love things that are beautiful. My entire life has been a quest for beauty. So you might be surprised that she also has a junk room. In 1974, Babs took House Beautiful on a tour of her California home at the time, showcasing everything inside. As she took the magazine into her solarium, which she revealed she called her quote junk room, she said, I guess I'm sort of a dichotomy. I love precision and perfection, but I also like junky things too. How much does she love junk? She actually ended up dedicating a second room to junk as well. Barbara Streisand's $100 million Malibu compound is a design nut's dream, and not just for that shopping mall. There's another addition to her estate that's just as quirky in its own way, a full-sized replica of an 18th century New England barn. According to My Passion for Design, Streisand fell in love with New England farmhouses while antiquing along the scenic Route 7 corridor in western Connecticut. In the early 90s, when her interest in 18th century antiques was peaked, she decided to blend her two passions by building a fully functional 18th century barn. The result is a beautiful red and white barn, complete with a chicken coop that, quote, gives her fresh eggs every morning. As time went on, she's added even more to her barn, which now boasts a 4,000-pound water wheel. But it's not all chickens and hydraulic energy. According to the New York Times, the cozy getaway barn also has a frozen yogurt machine and a, quote, napping room. Streisand said, We treat the barn like a B&B, &B, as if we went away for the weekend but we don't have to drive. It's no secret that Barbara Streisand has often been referred to as a diva, but she's also definitely business savvy and has made a killing by trading stock. According to a 2020 piece by the New York Times, Streisand gets up almost every morning at 6.30 a.m. to check on the latest from the New York stock market. This is no new hobby for the performer either. In fact, in 1999, she told Fortune magazine that she made, quote, $130,000 on eBay stock in just one month. Always the savvy money magnet, she explained to the outlet that it just made sense for her to trade, as it was totally separate from her artistic endeavors. She said, I'm making an album now, but I can make an album at the same time as I can trade stocks. So how does she pick where to invest her hard-earned dollars? Per fortune, she claims she finds inspiration in her daily routines, using her Starbucks stock as an example because she, quote, goes to Starbucks every day. Streisand doesn't just look out for her own investments, though. She also tries to take care of others. For instance, in 1998, her friend Donna Karen gave her $1 million to invest. The result? Thanks to Streisand. The fashion designer nearly doubled her money, up to $1.8 million. More recently, though, it was a different kind of stock market generosity that made headlines. George Floyd's death on May 25, 2020, sparked a wave of protests across the country, giving international attention the Black Lives Matter movement and spreading a wave of activism across the globe. Many of the biggest names in the entertainment industry spoke out as well, but only Barbara Streisand backed up her words with free shares in Disney stock. Yes, on June 13, 2020, the official Instagram account for Floyd's daughter, Gianna Gigi Floyd, posted that Streisand had sent her Disney stock, along with two albums, My Name is Barbara and Color Me Barbara. The photos were accompanied by a message that read in part, I am now a Disney stockholder thanks to you. 
That was just one small personal gesture, but with all her lavish spending to make her estate as opulent as possible, it's worth mentioning that Barbara Streisand does give back, too. According to Elect Women, the director founded the Streisand Foundation in 1986, leading to tens of millions of dollars in donations for causes from civil rights to AIDS research to the environment. According to Philanthropy, Streisand's friend, Marjorie Tabankin, has been the executive director of her charity since 1987, and she explains, that the actor remains extremely involved in the organization, Tabankin said. She makes every decision, whether it's for $50 or $5 million. Tabankin further explained that the pair turned their sights to women's issues in 2007 after Streisand discovered that, quote, 50 years of the medical research used for treating women was actually done on male patients. So how else does Streisand pick what causes demand her attention? As she told the Harvard Business Review, her philanthropic pursuits are merely fueled by whatever she she's passionate about. Through my foundation, I make many small grants throughout the year, but I usually have one priority area where a majority of the grant making is focused. Considering Barbara Streisand once had, quite literally, two rooms to store her junk, it's difficult even to fathom how many more treasures she's accrued throughout the decades. As such, it's no wonder that even Streisand needs a little bit of a therapeutic house cleaning once in a while. In 2009, The Guardian reported that Streisand auctioned several hundred personal items that she gathered over the course of 67 years, spread out between three houses in Beverly Hills, Malibu, and New York City. According to the Julian's Auctions listing page, there were countless gems from the thespians' collection, including antiques from her earliest days as a collector, to some of Streisand's memorable movie costumes, including outfits from Funny Lady, Yentl, Meet the Fockers, and The Way We Were. Christie's reported the total amount sold was $2,986,810, and of course, proceeds went towards the Streisand Foundation. Streisand said, What good does it do in storage? Let someone else enjoy it. These things, they're not forever, we pass them on and reap the benefits for something important. You know what they say, one star's junk is the world's treasure. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more grunge videos about your favorite celebrities are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.